The thing that I like the most about clay is the fact that, you know, it's so moldable. All you need to make something is a bag of clay in your hands, and you can turn that lump into anything. So each piece is a new challenge. I think about what I want to make and what I want it to look like, and then I have to kind of start at the beginning and figure out technically how am I going to do that. In my work, I want there to be a sentimental feeling, a nostalgic feeling, and garments and clothing. I mean, the idea that somebody wore that, somebody touched that, somebody chose that particular piece of clothing to express themselves. You know, I was always drawn to figurative work. I felt like what spoke to me about it was the emotion and the feeling. But what I didn't care for with figurative work was that you would get hung up on a very specific person. So the dress for me lets me still work with the figure but it lets me leave a lot open to the viewer. I might be coming at it from a place of complete joy, but somebody else might look at it and look at the objects that I've paired with it or the surface treatment, and it might trigger something in them that's completely different. When I look back at my very first uh, works that I was doing in, in college before I was focusing on the dress, they were all these tall, narrow, cylindrical forms. Then the dress just kind of, I was able to kind of carry on that form that I, that I like to work with so much. I always discover a new process or a new technique or um, I hone something and then I try to take that into the next body of work. So I mean, even though I'm continually working with the dress, I'm still aiming and hoping for you know my pieces to evolve and change. I fire my work out at Rich Higdon's uh, place. He is a potter up here in uh, Jackson Port and he has a studio um, that houses his kiln and mine. Part of what attracted me to his space was that he had a large gas kiln and the work that I was doing when I left school was quite large and I needed I, and wanted a kiln that was large enough to for me to continue the work that I was doing when I left school. My, my pieces are three stages for their finishing. Um, I always, in the building process, I, I always work with a lot of slips. The piece is fired. I usually fire around cone one, cone two, um, which is a generally a higher temperature than you would normally bisque a piece, which a bisque is, a, is the term for the first firing. Um, you know, and then usually, how it would work was you'd bisque a piece, you'd pull it out, you'd glaze it, and then you'd refire it to whatever temperature that glaze is. But because I, I paint my pieces, I only fire once, so I want to make sure that I fire that piece high enough that that clay has some strength to it. The higher you fire your, your clay, the stronger that clay body is going to be. I like my paints, I like to work with them very thinned out, almost like washes. I like a lot of thin layers, and so I, it keeps it almost a translucent. Um, appeal to the paints. I do a lot of fine detailed work and glaze has a tendency to sometimes fill in detailed work and with the paint I can really get in there and and keep a lot of that very subtle detail. You know when I first started making my dresses it was all about the outside. It was all about embellishing um, the garments on the outside, placing objects in their pocket, you know, having them you know, what they were going to show to the world on the outside. And I thought, wow, I have a lot of untapped space on the inside that I'm not using, you know, that could help tell a story about, you know, this character that I'm creating. Um, and so I thought, what would, you know, what would happen if I just cut out the front of that dress and I, and I exposed that inner space and I used it to kind of tell an inner story? Um, I started looking at a lot of stage work, a lot of stage design, and I loved how they would get these three-dimensional, you know, they would get these uh, illusions of three-dimensional things by taking two-dimensional things and kind of um, layering them um, back and forth. And that's what you're, gonna, that's what you see there with Emily. Um, she has the little portal that you can look through, and then when you look in, you see what looks like waves, but you know, the waves are just these flat pieces, but the way that they're in there, you know, layered, it kind of gives them uh, some dimension. As a young artist, you know, one of the things that were so appealing to me in staying in Door County, it's so wonderful up here, the community that um, Door County artists have and how helpful they are to emerging artists and younger artists that are 
um, possibly a little less established. Um, the, the environment up here is so nurturing and friendly and supportive. Um, so it's just, it's a really great place to want to make art.